What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, I'm going to be showing you guys how I'm going to be plumbing my hydraulic pumps for my tilt bed. Now, the way that I'm going to be explaining it to you guys is going to be one pump, one dump setup. I know it's kind of confusing for a lot of people, especially a lot of new people like me. And I'm mainly making this video because I was super confused on how this was all set up since I don't come from the lowrider world. I don't know anything about lowriders and I'm learning a lot as I'm trying to do this whole four stage tilt bed on my mini truck. So it's definitely a lot that I'm learning and I figured some of the information that I've been learning might be useful to some of you guys who are getting into the game or are getting into lowriders or just like learning about lowriders in general. Here I have just about everything that we need laid out now. I have a couple of tools and I have a couple of fittings and I'm gonna walk you guys through everything right now. First things first, this is uh, from Hoppo's. Everything here is from Hoppo. So right now I'm using pretty much everything that Hoppo's gave me with their kit. So a I might change a couple of these things out in the future and I'll explain once I get to them. Uh, but this is all that Hoppo's included with the kit. Now the way I did it, since I'm going to be building a four stage rack, I need four pumps. And one that I ended up doing is I purchased a Z rack uh, kit, which comes with three pumps and four cylinders, uh, two for the dump and then one for the side and one for the other side. So four total. And then I ended up purchasing a basic dump kit, which comes with one pump and two cylinders. And that gave me a total of six cylinders and four pumps, which is what I'm gonna be running on my truck. They didn't come assembled in my case. So I'm gonna show you guys how to assemble it. It's pretty simple. Comes with this little guy right here. I don't know the proper name, but what essentially what this does is it, it connects the motor spline to the spline on the actual pump. If you guys look in there. This is a eight spline, so that goes on the motor side right there. And then obviously the one with more splines goes on the pump. They're gonna put this on there. It is a little tricky, but uh, it's definitely doable. Now, the way I want my setup to be is I want my power, where my power is gonna connect, I want that to be on the bottom. That way you don't really see the wires. Now you can technically put it two ways. You can have it be on the top where your holes are right here, where your ports are, and you see all the, all this, your mounting is down here. So technically you could have your port up here for your power or you could put it in the bottom. I wanted to put mine in the bottom so you don't see it. It only goes on one of two ways. So that engages right there. Now you get these long bolts that should uh, come already on there. It's kind of what holds the motor together. And be careful because the motor will fall apart if you don't have, if you're not holding it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna push this in and we're gonna feel it go down. Once you feel this long bolt kind of click into place right there. I'll do that again, that way you guys can see. I already have the motor in the bottom connected. Make sure to not forget that little drive shaft piece. Like I said, I don't know the proper name. I call it a little drive shaft because if you don't, you're just gonna sit here, spin your motor and you're never gonna spin the pump and you're just gonna be wondering why. So uh, what we're gonna do is push down on this bolt Put a little bit of tension and spin the motor until you hear it click. Uh, it's a little tricky. Sometimes you get it, sometimes you don't. Right there, you guys heard it click. So now we know we're in the actual hole. Same thing over here. The kit that they give you and the parts that they give you in order to install your slowdown, which is this guy right here, uh, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's a valve that controls how much you want it to slow down as it's coming down. If you leave this all the way wide open, which is left, it's all the way open. As soon as you tap your dump, the bed is gonna fall super fast or your suspension is gonna fall super fast because uh, there's gonna be pretty much no restriction. The more you tighten this, the more restriction you have, meaning it will dump down slower. The way I have my, my pump set up with my racks, I don't have a lot of space. So what I ended up doing is I went and picked up these hydraulic fittings, make sure that they are hydraulic fittings. They're not brass fittings or anything like that. Make sure they are hydraulic. This is gonna go like that and it's gonna make my uh, slow down lay down a little bit, it's kind of tricky right now. So it's gonna make it lay down like this versus standing straight up. I'm trying to make this as tight and compact as possible since I am very limited on space. Now, uh, there's multiple things you can use to seal it up. This is what I'm gonna be using. It is uh, Loctite for hydraulic and pneumatic applications. You can see right there, sorry, the tag is a little messed up. Or you could use just some regular Teflon tape now I did use a little bit of Teflon tape and I did use a little bit of this, but with this, you have to wait for it to dry for over 24 hours and then it could touch fluid. If fluid touches it before then, it will leak because it won't dry all the way up. Uh, this stuff also, when it dries, it dries up almost like a rubber O-ring kind of effect. I would bet more money on this ceiling than Teflon tape. However, if you're out somewhere, this probably won't 
be too good since you need this to dry for 24 hours versus this you could just wrap it up and then you will be good to go actually it matters which one goes on first because i learned the hard way I had everything set up and i had to take it all apart uh, because everything kind of crashes with each other this is where your pressure is going to be coming out and this is where the rest of the oil is going to be going back in so this is your return and this is your pressure out because we're going to be putting our return set up first so for that you want to make sure to put either some thread locker or put some uh, teflon tape all right so before you tighten this guy up all the way you want to make sure that you put your slow down valve on there because once you start to tighten this there's no other way you can tighten this one so this one only really fits here and on this side so anything else would hit now for anyone wondering uh, all of these threads right here are 3 8 mpt uh, in case you need to go get yourself some 90 degree fittings or some fittings like this All right, now this is the part where you guys need to pay attention. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna put a 3 8 NPT to a, it's obviously a 90, uh, to a swivel. You guys are gonna see why in a minute. There's no way that I can, I can tighten down this uh, slowdown because it would hit every rotation. And even if I tighten this onto the 90, I couldn't tighten the 90 on because it would hit this. So that's why this goes on first and then we can put our um, swivel on. So we can tighten this all the way until we have it nice and tight. And then since there's a swivel, we can just thread it on. So I'm actually going to have my dump mounted over here. So I want this facing that way. This is the important part. You always wanna make sure that you put a check valve. Now, don't get confused with a fitting like this. I know they look very similar, uh, but this is not a check valve. I'll show you guys in a minute. So they look very similar from the outside. However, this is a check valve, this isn't. This goes straight through, and this has a little ball valve. Pressure that builds up when you activate the pump goes through here. It'll go through your check valve. It'll go past your dump, and it'll go into your cylinders. And once it's full of pressure, it'll come back and it'll stop right here. Uh, the way it's set up, the ball valve won't let the pressure go that way. It'll only let it go one way. So the way this goes on is the ball side goes towards your uh, swivel and the pressure coming out is gonna hit the ball first. The way these dumps are designed, you could put it either like this or like that. It doesn't matter, but if you look, there is three ports. There's one, two, and three the way it works is fluid goes through here back and forth no problem uh, but once it tries to go back through the bottom that's where it can't go so once you activate the dump it opens up that little cylinder and it lets the fluid allow us to go back now you guys can see why we have the swivel here because we don't have to be spinning this we'll just hold it right here use our little swivel and there you go get two wrenches and tighten it up now, just to kind of illustrate and show you guys, um, that way you guys don't get confused, uh, this port, so I'll explain it right now. So this is gonna be hand tight for now. When you hit your switch, fluid is gonna go through here into your hose for your cylinders. So let's pretend that there is a cylinder on this hose right here. So fluid is gonna go through, past the check valve into your cylinder, and it's gonna lift up that cylinder. And then once it builds up the pressure it needs to, or you know, as soon as you let off and there's no pressure going this way, all that pressure is gonna to wanna to go back. But since your dump is just closed, that's how it stays, it's closed. Can't go back out this way and there's a check valve, so it can't go back that way, so it'll just stay. Now, since I don't have all of the equipment that I need, this is, I'm gonna do it for now, but I do plan to probably put a hard line right here just so that this hose isn't super kinked. Um, I know this will work for now, so I'll probably just run this for now. But uh, once I start to upgrade to hard lines and figure out where I wanna mount everything, I'll probably end up going to hard lines. And obviously if I do do hard lines, then I'll show you guys how I do it. Any fitting that looks like this, any MPT fitting is going to have either some thread locker or some uh, Teflon tape. But when you get to a flare fitting like this right here, 
or like this one, you use nothing at all because there's already a little chamfer inside of the hose and that is what seals it up. So when you have a flare fitting, don't put anything. Let the fitting do the job. Just tighten that up like that. This is a pretty gnarly bend right here, but it's gotta be done. Like I said, not really a fan of it, but this is all that came with the kit. This is all I have at the moment. So I'm just gonna rock it like this for now. It should be perfectly fine. For now, they will do, they'll get the job done and uh, it'll allow me to save up some money to eventually upgrade to hard lines. So obviously you guys know, this uh, lowrider stuff is pretty expensive. So right now we're just kinda working with what we got and just making it work, right? I know this video was a lot of talking, but I hope you guys definitely enjoyed it and found it useful. Now, if you guys have any questions, you guys already know what to do. Feel free to message me on Instagram or you guys can comment down in the comment section below. If you have any better way of doing this than the way I did it, definitely put it in the comment section below because I'll be able to learn off of it and so will all the viewers. We're all here to just help each other out and try and figure this out. Hopefully in the next up and coming videos, we will get some more work done on the old 720. Uh, my goal is to have the four stage rack done by, summer's pretty much already started, but I wanna have it done by this summer. That way I can go to all the shows and uh, dance it and meet a lot of you guys and show you guys all the setup and everything like that. So uh, should be pretty fun, but there's still a lot of work to be done. I still have to mount the batteries, still have to make a battery tray. Still have to wire up all these pumps, plumb all these pumps. So I still have a lot of welding and fabricating I have to do. But that's all part of the fun. I like the journey. I like the learning process. So I don't mind it. I'm having a blast. And I hope you guys are uh, having a blast watching these videos. And uh, yeah, we're back in the 80s, baby. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Later, guys.